I'm Matt Buell with MBL Studio. I'm here on behalf of the Woodworking Network today. This is our first video, our monthly series of tips and tricks and little teaching here and there's from a working pro. That's me. I want to start this off talking about something that is usually not discussed much or at all in the woodworking circles. The most important tool or machine in your shop, in my opinion, you. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff on the internet about dust collection, you know, what, what the damage of like dust does to your lungs and all these things. Already lots of that out there. So I'm not going to get real far into that. I will say though, if you're crazy like I am and you find that you're doing a task where dust collection or trying to figure out a way to, to maintain it is futile, pointless, you can build a room dedicated to unbridled dust disaster. That's what I did. So I'm doing sculptural work or a lot of routing and there's a lathe tucked around the back. This room is where I can throw on the mask and not even care. But because it's in a room, it's not dust migrating all over my shop that I'm getting to inhale three days later on my saw across the studio. Now, don't tell, I haven't built the door yet. So, there's also a lot on the internet about, you know, safety with your hands and your fingers. I mean, everyone's like, you're a woodworker, how many fingers you got, right? And I always just say, shh, that's bad luck. But there's a lot out there. So I'm, I'm not touching that today either. We'll let the internet have the win. Fine with me. I want to talk about the two parts of you that don't get enough discussion. One, your eyeballs. But two, your back. If you've never had a back injury, Please listen carefully. If this isn't working, you're not working. And if you're not working, you're not making any money. So on we go. First thing is, these are your standard workbench size and tops. And this is a famous workbench. Been around longer than I've been alive. This is a more contemporary famous workbench. These are great heights for stuff like sanding, right? I'm standing here all day long sanding. I'm not gonna turn it on because you wouldn't be able to hear my wonderful voice. Um, this is fine. I'm not using any leverage. I'm not exerting myself. I'm not doing a bunch of hunching over. Like, this is good, this is good. I've done it for probably 20,000 hours. So, this works. However, if you're not average height just like me, and you're a little taller, or maybe you're a little shorter, both are cool, I highly recommend that you take the time to build at least one and maybe two workbenches that are at a height customized to what works for you. I've done that. Um, I found it a little bit, little bit taller, just seemed to feel a little bit better on me. And I mean, when you're doing this for days and months and years on end, that's wear and tear, right? Just like a machine, the more I use it, the more wear and tear it gets, right? I can't replace this one. So that, that, I think I went up about two inches made a huge difference for me, especially sanding these kinds of things. So I did it and it helps. I know it seems silly, but when you think about it from a cumulative perspective, we're talking about a career. That's a marathon, not a sprint. And these are the little things that I call the preparation to help you maintain. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, your eyeballs. Magnets are your friends. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm Mr. Perfect and I haven't had tight deadlines and worked some long hours before and maybe jumped on a saw real quick and forgot that I didn't have my safety glasses until I was halfway running it and in that moment just chose to keep going. Pretty stupid. At least I'm humble enough to admit it. But I look for a solution and after the last time that happened, I went out and I bought a ton of safety glasses and I put them on every machine. No excuses. Injuries to your eyes can be career ending and life altering. Okay, gotta have them. I don't know anyone that's got replacement parts for these, I, don't, I can't find them. So these are really important, okay? Let's keep going. So a popular discussion is in feed and out feed, right? I didn't have any four by eight sheets on hand days, so I'm using this for example. I think you'll be able to pick it up. These guys are just little sawhorses. They don't look like much, do they? But they're built exactly to the height of my table saw. 
These allow me, when I need the infeed, I got it. When I don't, it's not my way, okay? Bring it back. So when I get a four by eight sheet up, I want to make some cuts. Having the two allow me to have balance help. And I always have this one scoot back a little bit further, maybe not that far, to where I can still access my on off switch, right? I mean, that's important. But it allows me to get it up, on the, up against the fence and on the saw, and I'm just guiding. I'm not straining, I'm not lifting, I'm not, and also that's safe for running a saw. You're not dealing with kickback problems, all that stuff. These are all stars in this, in this shop. I love them. But it allows me to cut up full four by eight sheets by myself with hardly any exhaustion. And a big rolling cart, which I'll get to in a minute, in tandem with them, allows me to go straight from my truck or delivery straight to this without ever having to lift a sheet of plywood. You just roll, put it on the cart at truck height, roll the cart to these guys, take it off one at a time, move around a little bit, and you're good. So it works out really well. Doesn't look like much, but I'll tell you what, there's days that I absolutely know these have saved me. Another little trick is this guy. It just looks like a boring shelf with nothing on it. That's the point. So this allows me to cut four by eight sheets of plywood long ways by myself. A visual example, there you go. Say I've got my fence set right here. Yeah, I'm cutting some little, which is ridiculous, but I've got support over here. Also helps me not have kickback problems and it helps me balance the workpiece. But because I'm a stickler about having a shop that's really flexible and fluid, it also, by doing it as a shelf, allowed me to still have an open channel because a lot of times I'm running carts through here, you know? So I always think about pathways when I'm planning a studio out. So that's a big one. That's a big one. And also there's safety glasses on a magnet here too. Um, so then we get to carts. So this is a big four by eight cart. I always recommend if you have a bigger space, that you have one of these cause I can back this right up, pop the door open, drop my truck tip, my tailgate and unload right to it every time by myself. No problem. I'm in and out the door in 10 minutes. I'm not doing any lifting. I'm barely lifting. I'm just dragging. It's a lot easier on my back. So I highly recommend that also a tandem of rolling carts. I call them rolling options. I like having lots of them. I highly recommend you build two like I've got here that can match that together. Because what you can do is you can actually connect them if you have to, but it's also just a lot easier transferring materials. But notice these heights are similar to those workbench heights. I'm not leaning, I'm not straining. It's all right in the right, kind of the grid where it's less leverage on me. Also, this is one of the best things I've ever built. I call these assembly tables. And for me, I like this height to roughly around two feet off the ground. The reason I like it is a piece like this. You know, most people are just gonna put it on the ground and work on it from the ground. Why would I want to sand these suckers like this all day long? I mean, as much sanding as I'm going to do to it, no way. I like it right here. I can sand the top. I can work the whole piece over and I'm not straining my body. I can install hardware and it's right in view. It's so much easier. And also the quality of work to be better because you're not straining and tired and worn out from just doing it in a way that's not efficient. This is also a fantastic height for assembling chairs or any sort of furniture assemblies. It also just looks cool. They display pretty nice on these things too. But this is a great, great thing I highly recommend. I built this exact set with having in mind that they can connect. I've just got some dominoes here that help them just kind of stay stable together. I have an eight by eight assembly table whenever I want it, which seems ridiculous, but assemble a king size bed frame. You gonna do that on the floor too? Let me know how that works out. All right. And then for the, the last and not least, the rolling cart option. I'll bring it to you. So a lot of times when I've got a finished work piece, and I don't really want to lift it away for someone, maybe my help's not here, and I need to get this thing in the finish room, and it's 10 o'clock at night. It's already on the cart. I can wheel this sucker in and out all day long. So if I've got multiple pieces and on multiple carts, wheel it in, shoot it, let it cure, Get it out, roll the next one in. You can just keep doing them in tandem. This is great. This is the little stuff that's allowed me to stay upright for years. Hope some of this is helpful. 
even if just one little thing grants you a few more years of work. And if all else fails, get yourself an apprentice who's six foot three, 19, and sturdy as all get up. That's good for your back too. Everybody, me, Jacob. He's helpful. My back likes him too. Anyway, that's all we got this month. Uh, hope we were helpful and uh, stay tuned. There'll be more to come.